Uh, I'm not going to take much of your time because tonight we are joined with one of the most uh, impressive leaders in our party, uh, the highest ranking woman in, in Ohio, and I think she has got a very bright future ahead of her. Um, Jennifer Bruner, I know that that's why almost all of you are here tonight because you're so excited and passionate about her. We saw last night that if we don't come out, young people in particular, that can have some pretty devastating consequences. Two states are now living in a, under, or will be very soon, living under Republican rule. Virginia that has been so prosperous because of the excellent governance of Democrats, uh, and, and they are now gonna suffer the consequences of young people not caring. Um, but we do have uh, people in politics and politicians and, and candidates who do excite young people just like Barack Obama did. And we have organizations like this that can mo mobilize those folks. And we're not gonna let it happen next year when we re-elect Mary Jo Kilroy, uh, Ted Strickland, and we elect someone to the United States Senate for uh, <laughs> 2010. So um, again, I just want to welcome all of you, and um, she needs no additional introduction, Jennifer Bruner. People's lives. A lot of times, we as Democrats call ourselves progressives, and, and I think a progressive is a little bit different from a liberal, because a progressive is, is focused, liberal thinks is, is about being inclusive and bringing everybody in, and progressives are liberal, but progressives take, take it a step further. They're understanding that it's about helping our community pro progress. It's about helping people improve their lives. It's about moving things ahead. And so if you're a progressive, oftentimes, too, you're very pragmatic. You're saying, well, if I want something to happen, I've got to figure out what's going to work. And you don't want to compromise your principles about human rights and civil rights and individual rights. But you say, you know, there's got to be more than one way to get this done. And you're willing to work with people from both sides so that you can move us forward. And so it was, it was when I was on the bench and looking at the dismal outcome, and when I say outcome, I mean how people were treated in the election in 2004, that I said, I can do better. And it, it, it was a tough decision to make because I had to actually resign from the bench and basically go back to private practice and, and run, not knowing whether I'd win election or not. But I think for those of you who ever want to run for office, the more that you can operate based on what you believe, what your passion is, and run without that kind of fear of what will happen if I lose. Because if you can say, I had a good life before I ever did this, I'll have a good life again, and no one who holds elected office is doing that for the whole entirety of their life, that then you understand that I will do whatever I can do. I will do the best that I can do for the time that I am given. And I'm not gonna worry about whether I leave a legacy for myself and a lot of times we say we want to make a difference. Yes, we want to make a difference, but in the end, what we want to do is we want to make people's lives better so that it's not about me, it's about you. And so what you say to yourself is, I will do everything that I can to try to make people's lives better for the time that I'm here. And I will hope and pray that what I do will inspire other people and create the ripple effect that will improve other people's lives, which is beyond what I could do no matter how hard I tried. And, and that is the power of public service, and that's the power of the kind of democracy that we have. Um, I'm very grateful that I've had the opportunity as Secretary of State to try to protect that democracy, because it really is the system that we want to go on. Any one of us that, was a, that would be a leader, we're gonna be gone someday. But if we have strengthened the system so that people trust it and people believe in it, it's that system that will carry <laughs> us forward for many, many years to come. And so when I look ahead to the United States Senate, I see the opportunity because there, there is so much money coming from Washington, now whether it's because they don't have to balance their budget, and we do in the state, it's kind of a sad statement, but on the other hand, it, it, it's, it's a very large, diverse country, and this is the shot that we have to try to stimulate the economy, to try to grow jobs, to try to make, make things right that will improve people's lives. And so even though I know I would be one senator out of 100, but that could make 18 women out of 100 total in the Senate, which I think we ought to probably get that number up there. Uh, I, I know that, that if, if you can be effective in working with both sides and being pragmatic, in being oriented toward sticking to your principles, but making the compromises that you need to make to make something happen, that you can do some good. And I also know that a good senator isn't just spending time in Washington, but a good senator is trying to bring back resources to the state of Ohio to try to, and working collaboratively with state and local elected officials, with students, with business, with labor, with nonprofit organizations, with civic organizations, and, and bringing them together in such a way that 
for a particular problem that they want to solve, you bring those stakeholders to the table, you listen to what the different points of view are, you craft the best solution, taking as much into account as you can, and you're more likely to come out with an accurate solution that works, that costs less, that allows you then to take that and replicate it and grow it from that point on. And your stakeholders then go back to where they came from, and that change that everybody wanted is a little easier to accept because people's voices were heard in the process, and they then become your ambassadors of change.